still have things you want to talk about. I will to Hello, neighbor. <laughs> Still think about Mr. Rogers' sign-off song. I should YouTube it, search it up. Learn the words. <laughs> do my own version. I might do that. I might do that. <laughs> I might do that. I don't know if it makes sense at all or if it needs to make sense. But maybe the world would be a better place <laughs> with uh, me <laughs> with a new version of Mr. Rogers' goodbye song. And if I learned the words to Mr. Rogers' goodbye song and sang it, You'll have things you want to talk about. <laughs> I will too. Good morning, Josh Hagran. Good morning, Mowing God. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Dan, Connie, Wet, Thomas, Carol, Lady in the Red Dress. Isn't there a song by like Simply Red? Eh, maybe not. Uh, user RJ J. Kelly. And that's it. That's it. Not that that's what I say. Dude, <laughs> my intro morning singing. I don't know. I, I think the slow tempo of Mr. Rogers' goodbye song. Again, I don't know the words to either. I mean, if I think if the music started playing, I could probably sing right along. But I currently don't have the technology in place right now. And I mean, it doesn't have to be super fancy technology. It could be an old tape player with a cassette where you pushed play and it started going. Started making the music. Me and Fred Rogers could really rock out this morning. Uh, Sean, Pictish, Jenny. Josh Hagrand's really out there slamming the likes. I appreciate that, Josh Hagrand. Poor Josh Hagrand. I mean, maybe not poor Josh Hagrand. You all, <laughs> and some of you I don't even know. I mean, I, I assume Josh Agrand is a man. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever seen a picture of him, but he watches me, has been watching a long time, and he's never just been Josh. He's always Josh Agrand. Not really sure why or if there's a rhyme or a reason why people take on certain personas by reading their name. Oh, but you do. <laughs> Hello, Sean. Hello, King. Uh, slamming the likes. I appreciate that, Josh. But good morning, good morning, good morning to you. My name is Ken Tracy. And uh, this is Coffee with Ken. You see it says that on my sweatshirt. Although it's falling away. A woman made this for me. And a t-shirt. She warned me not to put it in the dryer. Oh. Kind of same case with my coffee cup. I knew there was risk in putting it in the uh, dishwasher. I flaunted those risks and my modern technology that is a clothes dryer and a dishwasher. I was determined to use them regardless of the danger. 
and now I'm suffering the consequences with a logo that's falling away on both my mug and my sweatshirt. Certainly, next time I'm mega rich and mega famous, and you are all clamoring for merch, I will find a company that really puts the logo on firm. Uh, and uh, uh, on both my mugs and my shirts and my what have you. Starlight asked, what do I do to keep my teeth so white? I I'm guessing TikTok probably has something. I mean, I don't know, I use whitening toothpaste. I use whitening toothpaste. But I'm betting if I, they look like like a glowing white, uh, I think it might be the lighting, honestly. But I've used, there's times in my life, I used to chew tobacco. Ugh. <laughs> it's a nasty habit, but I sure enjoyed it for many, many years. And my teeth, I remember uh, my oldest daughter was, I'm going to guess like two and a half. And there was uh, my very first... Uh, Facebook profile picture was me holding her when she was two or two and a half or something at the zoo and I'm smiling and I looked at my picture and I go, boy, my teeth look kind of yellowish. <laughs> it's not a good look. It's not a good look. Uh, so I don't know what I did first. Stop chewing tobacco or start with the Crest White Strips. But, uh, uh, both of them, I'm sure, helps. And I think if you want whiter teeth, uh, I think you certainly could do it with those white strips. They work, and they're easy, and they're fairly cheap, and uh, it's it works. You know, it works, and your teeth look whiter. And uh, I'm sure the toothpaste helps as well. Uh, but I appreciate the question. <laughs> I do not have any tattoos. No, I don't have one. <laughs> I wonder, as popular as tattoos are these days, if they're going to invent a way for when the baby comes out of the mama <laughs> for it to come out pre-tattooed. Save everybody the inevitable trouble wonder what tattoo a brand new fresh baby would wear. I love mom. <laughs> smell me. I smell like a baby. Ain't I cute? <laughs> uh, kind of quiet this morning. Kind of quiet this morning. Let me have a little sip of water. Josh suggested the year they were born. Let's just stamp it on their forehead. 1968. Cha-chunk. Seems like something. And I never read George Orwell's 1984. Poor George. I thought he, I'm sure he tried to pick a way advanced year at that time. Look at us now, we're looking back and going, 1984. It was so long ago. But anyway, uh, again, this is Tuesday morning. It is, I don't know the time. I should know the time. I like to talk about an hour. And without my watch, how am I going to do that? I could guess. I guess I could guess. <laughs> could do it by sunlight. Ah, the sun is high in the sky. It must be noon. The sun is high in the sky. What if it was a cloudy day? We would have to guesstimate the time. It would be problematic. <laughs> but anyway, it's Tuesday morning. It is uh, now. It is six. Uh, no, it's not. It's five forty. It's five forty. What are you guys doing up? You guys should go back to bed. You guys should go lay down, get under the blankies, put a couple pillows on the side and kind of cuddle a spoon of pillow and uh, go back to bed. 
But anyway, it's Tuesday morning. It is uh, 5.40. It is uh, September. I think it's September 17th. I believe it is September 17th. Uh, Happy Tuesday. It's a show I've been doing for a while. Quite some time, I've heard. It's a show about me talking. show about me sharing some feelings. Sharing a little bit about my day, my dreams, my hopes, my fears, my emotions. I've always been an emotional guy. Uh, My mom was extremely emotional. Uh, my brother Steve was certainly very emotional and, uh, sometimes you can struggle, uh, when you're extra emotional or you fear or you love or you, uh, uh, worry or what have you with great passion can be problematic. I've seen therapists. Oh, I've seen therapists. Now I just talked to my phone on uh, early in the morning. But anyway, for those that have been watching a while, for those that have been watching a while, you know it's not just a show about me. Uh, Sharing my love of coffee. And with that in mind, I have a nice hot cup of coffee in front of me and I am so excited uh, to take my first sip. My hope is wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you got a hot cup of coffee uh, in front of you as well. Cheers to us. Oh. Oh. It's the same in Dolce. Let me have another sip. I don't know if I was grateful enough for this first sip. So if you're joining me out there, make sure you really mean it when you take that next sip and show gratitude to the world. Mm. Oh, thank you, Lord, for that delicious, delicious cinnamon dolce coffee. Hello, Kelly R. Ah, various questions. I will back page. I will moonwalk backwards. Am I in a hotel? No. I mean, I'm in an extended stay. I've extended my stay. I came here uh, five weeks ago or maybe six weeks ago now and said, hey, I just rode a scooter back from Wyoming to uh, Chicago. I need a place to sleep. I need a job. What should I do, Mr. Ho- or extended stay manager? And he goes, well, check in. I can't help you with the job, but I can give you a place to stay. And I go, okay, well, there's 50% of my needs. And what is it, Mas- Mavlov or Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Housing is probably important. So check that box. Next day I go, huh. I will have to pay for this roof over my head, not to mention many, many other expenses. I will need to go find gainful employment. Button, got my shirt on, got my fancy shoes on, put on my jeans. I'll tell you what, my fancy shoes kind of hurt at the time. They're, they've never been that comfortable. They've never been that comfortable, partially because I don't wear them that much. Maybe it's the type of shoe or something. Maybe they're just stink. But either way, I had a very damaged ankle from my scooter ride back from Wyoming. But I thought fashion would win out over uh, uh, comfort on that day, and it did. And I went out and find a job, found a job, and uh, been working the last six, seven weeks and building up a foundation underneath me and uh, uh, continuing to go down my path and get stronger. Am I still in Yellowstone or back in Naperville? Well, I answered that question uh, during that last segment where I am back in Naperville and I have been for about six weeks. 
Uh, what target am I at? I have, what is it? Is it the 17th of September? I left Target one year ago today. I left Target one year ago today after a seven month stint at Target. I was gonna say I like Target better as a store than a place to work, but honestly, you know, if I was, uh, I don't know, somebody doing a summer job or, I don't know, it was all right, it was all right. Uh, so yeah, I'm not at Target anymore. Starlight's talking about elephants. Kelly R says, good morning. And I will say good morning to you and good morning to you, Sandra Lynn. Thank you all for joining. <laughs> now I don't know what to say. <laughs> kind of got my intro, came back to the intro after I'd gotten into the quality content with which I was going to speak this morning. Oh, when that happened and I was in Yellowstone, if I had a quiet moment, I would stand up and, or no, not only Yellowstone. Back when I, where I was living uh, in my last house here in Naperville, we had a pretty yard. Actually, back in a few places I've lived. Uh, I really think location's super important when you're looking for a home. Uh, and we've been fortunate, we, I've been fortunate to have uh, live in various spots with special locations. Um, sometimes the location can just be a beautiful view, and I've certainly had some beautiful views uh, from where I've lived in the past. I was living in Four Lakes, which is in Lyle, about 10 years ago, and I had an amazing southern view, and... Uh, uh, just looking across a lake and just beautiful, beautiful view. And back in my apartment in Chicago, some of my apartments in Chicago had gorgeous views. But uh, when I grew up a little more and decided I wanted a piece of land or at least to rent a piece of land, uh, I was fortunate to live in some homes with really cool locations, uh, really cool locations. And the last house we were in, uh, had a cool location, was kind of be uh, alongside a uh, area owned by uh, the city of Naperville that they had, they mowed and kind of had water running through it, a little creek in it, but it was, I think, uh, uh, for to deal with excess water, or excess rain or what have you, but it was neat to live alongside. Made our yard seem even bigger than it was. And, had a lot of beautiful trees and some pretty houses over there. I don't know that I ever felt home in that home. And I don't think as nice as it was and as family friendly as it was, uh, yeah, I'm not sure it ever felt like uh, my home. We'd moved from a place in North Naperville uh, that was in a closer to downtown and a smaller home, not nearly as nice of a home, but still a smaller home that felt like it fit me a little better. My needs have certainly changed over the years, uh, or my wants. And I need a bigger place than this. I need another bedroom that I can have my two little ones uh, come over and stay over with me. Uh, I'm not quite there yet, but I'm on the way. And I'm doing what it takes to get there. Sometimes it takes longer uh, than you think. I think a lot of the reason I edit all these videos and I'm about four weeks behind in my editing and I go live every morning. I talk for about an hour and uh, edit an hour long video takes, I don't know, several hours. You have to listen to it. So it at least takes an hour. Then you gotta find good clips, add music, add words. You know, <laughs> it's probably a four hour investment in time to edit an hour video. So every one of these, in four weeks, I'm going to have to, I'm going to get to, you change it to get to from have to. 
and you feel a lot better. I'm going to get to edit these videos in four weeks. And I've already got four weeks of work cut out for me from speaking I've yet to do. Uh, and, uh, but anyway, it takes a long time, but I almost think, why, I think things happen for a reason and I believe in God and I believe in a higher power and I have faith and I've only come to that over the last several years because life got so hard without all those beliefs. And, um, because of that, uh, I keep going. <laughs> yeah. Lost my train of thought a little bit. You know what I do when I lose my train of thought? I drink some coffee. So cheers to us. Mm. Oh. Oh. Ricky T joined and he's on cup number one. I appreciate that, Ricky T. I think I'd like this Ricky T. He's a man, could be a woman of very few words. <laughs> he obviously likes his coffee. Keeps me posted on how well he's, how much uh, coffee he's drinking. See, I'm confused. Mo that's what lost. Mowing asked me a question. <laughs> and it was a question I just had answered. And a question he must know the answer to. That's what confused me and threw me off. I go, I just finished a story about that. About where I'm at and why I'm at it. Posted a video yesterday about, uh, uh, I think somebody would, didn't like my content on a different social media platform. And they said, <laughs> they go, oh, I know what I wanted to say. I'll get back to it, but I want to finish this story. They go, you're bleeding viewers. I know you don't answer any of your comments, but you're bleeding viewers. Do you wonder why? You know, I threw it with a voice in there because I know it wasn't sent with love. Some of my commenters don't aren't don't send their message to me with love. That used to get me. Most of my life it got me because I was needing to be loved by everybody. It's a hard existence if you need uh, to be loved by everybody. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's a really hard existence. And I think you got to learn to love yourself and be okay with who you are and what you're doing and the actions you're taking. Because if you let the uh, everybody's opinion get you, uh, uh, life's going to be hard. But anyway, this guy didn't like something I was talking about. And he made his comment on some video I did about real estate. So he must have some real estate connection because what I was saying must have offended him somehow. And uh, I did a video about it. And a woman commented and said, uh, most content creators do respond to comments unless they're uh, mega big or mega large or something like that. And at that point, I'm walking to my waiter job. When I saw the comment, I was a few minutes early, so... I saw her comment and I go, huh. She's probably hurt that I don't respond to every comment as well. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what mega huge is or whatever, but if, you know, I probably have other things to do than respond to every comment. Plus, I just don't want to get immersed in the emotion of everybody's reaction to every, every video I make. You know, I think that's one thing I struggled with a lot of my life is I'd say the same things I'm saying now. Uh, but my brothers would go, oh, that's stupid. <laughs> or 
society would tell me, hey, you know, you shouldn't think that way. Go to school, <laughs> get good grades, go to college, get a job, do this, get married, have two and a half kids. Oh, but some people aren't meant, aren't round pegs and struggle with the uh, round holes. And I think a little bit that was me. And I think we're all probably uh, fighting with that a little bit and finding our way and surprised that we're not all the same and we see things differently and we have uh, different things to do that, you know, affect us different ways. What was I saying? I said I'd get back to it. I said I would get back to it. Now I forgot what it was. Uh, fly like things coming at me. <laughs> there were two. I don't want two little fly like things coming at me. You ever notice, <laughs> I was at a Starbucks a couple, a week ago or something. And it's like a fly will land on you and you go, dang it, get off me fly. And you'll swat it. It'll fly around and then come back and land on you again. I wonder if it likes something on your skin or the aroma or, but it can be really <laughs> problematic because it's back again and you'll swat it, but they're pretty dang fast buggers and they fly right away. It was <laughs> tormenting me the other day. Fortunately, I made it through. I prayed about it. I was grateful for the soft seat and the coffee I was drinking. And all of a sudden I'd forgotten about Oh, I know what I was saying. <laughs> I'd forgotten about the fly. Obviously, I hadn't totally forgotten about the fly because it's still weighing heavily on me. I think the reason <laughs> I edited all these videos, as I was saying, uh, and I edited them four weeks, I'm four weeks behind. And I think things happen for a reason. And I think, as I was saying, I believe in a higher power. And... I think the reason, part of the reason I do these is because today, I don't know what I'm going to say, but I'm going to say something that in four weeks from now, I'm going to need. And the other day, I was reaching out to some buddies going, ah, you know, I'm working really hard at this, this, and this, and I wish this was happening, and, uh, you know, I wish it was getting better quicker, or life was changing quicker, or I was making a million dollars quicker, or... You know, any number of things that we wish uh, would happen uh, more quickly. And that, you know, during that time I was editing a video and uh, it was from four weeks ago. And I, that a patch in that video, I was talking about patience. I go, huh. I posted that video, and I don't know how many times it got seen, but that's not relevant. I think the one time that it got seen was by me, and I needed that message uh, at that time. And it's not like every moment since then I've been patient. Yesterday I was uh, uh, joking with a buddy, and we were talking about Honestly, my audience growing or social media success or revenue growing. And I go, but I can't quit my day job. <laughs> he goes, no, not today. Maybe not tomorrow, but maybe someday. I actually like my job. I like the people I work with. Work last night, I'm working tonight. Kind of feels good. Again, I think uh, just having a place to go is important. I think it would be hard uh, working from home every day. And I know a bunch of people do it. By the way, I drove by the Naperville train station yesterday. And I was, I'm pleased to report that the uh, uh, parking lot was full. And I remember four or five years ago uh, at the height of COVID, you know, when nobody was going to work, nobody was taking the train, I was worried uh, that that was going to be a forever state of being. Uh, so I'm happy that people are 
I'm happy to report people are out of their houses, driving their cars to the train station, and apparently <laughs> taking the train to downtown Chicago where they work, in offices and buildings. It's a fairly long commute, I'll tell you, I used to do it for a whole bunch of years. Well, kind of glad I'm not doing it now. Should have waited, kept waiting tables. I got out of college. Instead of going off into a job that put me in a suit and took me downtown, just got a job as a waiter. <laughs> hey there. I joke about that, but I'm serious. I, <laughs> I'm probably averaging as much money as a waiter as I did as a realtor. Uh, you think you're building something, and hopefully you are building something in a different career. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I must have built something. Built a big database. I built up a ton of people that knew me and people I knew. Yeah. Uh, there's advantages, <laughs> more advantages to waiting tables over a realtor. Yeah, your checks are a heck of a lot smaller, but they're uh, every night and every night you make a little money. And I'll tell you what, that gives you great peace of mind. Great peace of mind. I think uh, I talk about real estate a lot. I guess, you know, I did it a long time. Uh, you know, you'd line up a bunch of closings. You might have, I might have five scheduled over the next two months during a good period. And I'm going, okay, I've got it all figured out. I've got five closings scheduled. I'll get $35,000 from those five closings. But then one closing would happen and you go, okay, <laughs> got four closings scheduled now over the next seven weeks. Then another closing would happen and go, huh? All right, three closings scheduled, five weeks out. It's gonna, still gonna be a good five weeks, but we gotta refill <laughs> the pipeline. And sometimes you would, but sometimes those closings would just tick off and you're working hard and you're going, hey, how come I didn't schedule any more closings? Uh, and uh, you know, you don't always know the answer to it. You'd like to say the answer was, well, because uh, I think it's important to take responsibility, but you'd like to say I wasn't working hard enough or long enough or making enough contacts or what have you. But I think there's sometimes you might just be in the wrong spot, career, relationship, and uh, or not the wrong one. Because hopefully you're learning something from the spot you're in, the career you're in, and the relationship you're in. Uh, but it's there as more of a learning experience than a forever. Good morning, Chip. How are you? How long have I talked? <laughs> I wonder if I've said anything of value. We'll know in about four and a half weeks when I edit this video and I go, crap, what was I thinking this day? Obviously my brain waves weren't functioning very well. Go make your coffee, Chip. Go make your coffee. Well, I'm getting a lot of people liking the live. I mean, they're my usual suspects but I still appreciate the usual suspects and the new people that join. Let's have another sip. I might even go get some more coffee. Would you be okay with that? You probably would. You guys are sweet that way. Still got a little bit in here. It's not as hot as I'd like it, but it's more than I could. If I just put a topper, the topper would mix with this and it wouldn't be as hot as I'd like. So I'd rather drink this not as hot coffee as I'd like and then put a fresh cup in. You know what I mean? Oh, it's Tuesday morning, guys. I'm building up some momentum, although it doesn't look like I'm building up momentum. Uh, my eyes are shut. <laughs> But in my mind, I'm having positive things pump through my mind. Thinking about working out, but then I go, hey, I worked out yesterday. 
thinking about editing some videos and I'm going to edit some videos. Thinking about going to work tonight and I am going to work tonight. It's gonna to be a busy night. Kind of enjoyed it last night. It wasn't real busy. It was a Monday night. A lot of restaurants are closed on Monday nights. Our restaurant was pretty slow, but I got there early. I had four tables, four nice couples uh, that were all having a good time. and uh, It was very easy to manage, but busy enough that I had things to do and kept moving. Uh, but then one by one, the tables paid their bills and headed out. And it was just like a real, like I was just describing in real estate. I'd go, hey, now I've got three tables. Now I've got two. Now I've got one. And as the last one was leaving, I got another table that came in. Very, I was blessed with very nice customers and friendly people and people having a good time. And uh, last night, it was kind of an easy shift. Maybe too easy, I was sent home early. Uh, but it was nice getting uh, let out a little early. You know, feels good when uh, kind of like a snow day, something you didn't expect. You expected to be there until 10, 1030 or whatever. And you're heading out at 730. With no plans other than getting home, getting cozy, seeing what's on TV, maybe editing a video or two. Good morning, Will Bill Chill. Good morning. Mm. Oh, I dribbled. I think the mouth from my Will Bill Chill Cup. This might be forever known as my Will Bill Chill Cup. Because <laughs> Will Bill Chill got it for me. Oh, my boss, his wife, made me a little care package. I have some. She uh, discovered... <laughs> that one of her husband's employees has a coffee show, talk show. And she goes, oh, I don't like coffee, but I love tea. And she made me two little tea bags. I thought about having it for my show, but I thought maybe I'll do a spinoff someday that'll start with these two tea shows and this little chocolate. I might have this little chocolate right now. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my gosh. I wish I would have only had a half bite. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, I'm going to need some more coffee for that. Arch is asking if it's dark chocolate. I'm not sure what type of chocolate, but it was like a layer of chocolate covering some sort of orangey, delicious tastings stuff and it was honestly it was softer than I expected I was expecting more of the consistency of uh I don't know a Snickers or something like that looked kind of hardish but I bit into it and it fell apart mm. oh it is so good thank you boss's wife wonder if she watches my show I hope she does. It was delicious. It was delicious. <laughs> Maybe I, she and I can go into business together. She'll make the chocolates and I will sell them on my show. Hold on, I've got a topic I want to talk about. I'll be right back. Oh. oh. And I'll be back when the day is new. And you'll have things you want to talk about. I will too. It's very fortunate, my PJs, because I don't know, men out there will know, and maybe women know, I don't know what women wear for PJs these days. <laughs> Sorry, I'm picturing some silk, <laughs> sexy lingerie. My mind went to the gutter. Uh, but anyway. It's fortunate when my daughters bought me these PJs that there's... Because a lot of times PJs will come with like a flap in the crotch. These PJs do not have a flap in the crotch. 
And if they did, I'd be in danger. <laughs> These PJs do not have a flap in the crotch. And if they did, I'd be in danger. <laughs> My coffee fill up. That would be very awkward on a live show. <laughs> I'm almost blushing just thinking of it. Mississippi Mama Bear says she wears silk. I like the sound of that, Mississippi Mama Bear. Cheryl says we wear oversized pajamas, sweatshirts, and T-shirts. That's, I mean, yeah, no, I mean, that's cool, too. <laughs> Sorry, I'm distracted. Okay. Brittany Ray followed the live creator. Thank you so much, Brittany Ray. I hadn't had, I don't think I'd had anyone follow the live creator yet this morning. I so appreciate when you do. Uh, having fun on this platform, which is TikTok and various other social media platforms, growing my audience, kind of grows every day. And having somebody hop on during the live and follow me feels real good. So thank you for that, Brittany Ray. Um, what was I talking about? What was I talking about? Chocolate. Oh, selling things. I have a buddy that opened up a TikTok shop. Good morning, Ryan. And is selling things on TikTok. And he was talking to me about doing it. I think if it was the right product. But my videos wouldn't be very polished. I think there was like a sunglass maker. That you could sell sunglasses. And I go, well... I ride my scooter a lot. I'm bald. I wear sunglasses. Maybe I could sell these. How would I make the video? And I thought about it last night. And they were fairly low cost. They might have been like 10 bucks. And I pictured myself doing a series of losing or breaking my glasses and like sitting them on in my car. We'll get back to that. But sitting on them in my car and cr hearing that crunching sound and me going, eh. And then going into something. Well, I used to <laughs> buy Ray-Bans or Revos or whatever. Now I buy this brand. Because <laughs> not only are they super fashionable, but they're affordable. Probably wouldn't do that, but my mind started wondering... <laughs> I'd probably just go, hey, these are pretty good. Probably do it during my live. Go, hey, look, look what company sent me these sunglasses. Feel solid, how do they look? 12.99 on the link at my profile. You too will look cool like this. Sell those crest white strips I was talking about earlier. Sell these little chocolates for the my boss's wife. Hmm. I don't know. Might look at, <clears throat> into that someday, but I'd probably have fun with it. I'd probably have fun with it. I certainly wouldn't have them be very well polished or salesy. It'd probably be me. If I liked the product, it'd probably sell. Yeah. These Ugg slippers. I'm telling you. You all should get yourself a pair of these Ugg slippers. They're really nice. They are really nice. Uh, Ryan, you better throw a good question at me. I'm, I'm a man of few words today. I wonder if you counted how many words I've said. How many would it be? <laughs> would I have spoken a thousand words already? Yeah, I would have spoken a thousand. Would it be two? Would it be five? Would it be ten? I hear women use more words than men on a given day. I'll tell you what, during my, in some of my relationships, I've sure felt that. I worry sometimes. Uh, I started the show five years ago. I worry all the time. That's half of what my show's about. Uh, five years ago when I started this show, I didn't feel comfortable in my own skin and by myself and felt needy and felt I needed a, 
a woman in my life to complete me. And right now I feel so far the other way uh, and kind of enjoy, like enjoyed coming home last night and uh, being by myself and not, I'm sure when the time is right, that'll change. I'm sure that when the time is right, that'll change. But sometimes I think about that. Sometimes I enjoy being by myself so much. Uh, maybe that's what I'm destined to be. Yeah, I don't know. Mississippi Mama Bear says she's been to the world's largest truck stop. Very cool. Am I still going to Iowa this week? And I am not. How are my kids doing? Well, thank you. I'm getting the questions coming at me quickly. Uh, they're doing very well. Uh, they're doing very well. My big girls are doing great. My little ones are doing great. And I miss them all. I'll just say that. Hi, Aaron. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining, Lori. Hmm. Uh, but anyway, it's Tuesday morning. I don't feel like I have a whole heck of a lot more for you today. And maybe that's okay. Maybe that's okay. Maybe I don't need to talk for an hour every day. If I talk for 40 minutes, that's okay too. Maybe some days we can tackle world issues, politics, relationships, financial highs and lows. And, uh, Maybe some days we can just enjoy some quiet time together, uh, drinking some coffee. Do they live in my town or another town? Well, I have two ex-wives and they both live in another town, both towns that are very close, uh, but they both live in another town. And uh, you're right, divorce is very hard, Mama Bear. Ryan says he's coming to Chicago in two weeks. He'd like to meet up. He's been a long time follower. You coming out to Naperville, Ryan? I could probably meet you for coffee. I, I, as part of being a realtor, one of my strategies for a while was I'll meet anybody for coffee at any time. And I'd fill up my calendar with little coffee appointments. It was kind of fun. I'd you know, set up three at a Starbucks in a morning and have three different people. And I think the more you get to know people, uh, the more business you do. And it worked a little bit, kind of like everything else in real estate. But I used to meet a lot of people for coffee. And uh, I was doing, you know, I was doing a lot of advertising, doing videos for real estate. And uh, I think maybe at that time, Coffee with Ken had started. And I'd always worry that, I don't know, I was gonna let somebody down. Like Ryan, if you come out to Naperville, uh, okay, well, he's gonna be opening a restaurant there. Hey, I know a heck of a waiter. I didn't know you opened restaurants, Ryan. And I feel a little bad because Ryan, you probably feel like you know me very well and I appreciate your name and I know you come up uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't know your backstory and I apologize for that, but I just don't. Um, yeah, if you want to meet up, that'd be cool. But anyway, I worry that I'll be a letdown to somebody. I won't be as cool <laughs> as I am on my show or as good looking <laughs> or drink as much coffee. <laughs> Most people go, wow, you're taller than I thought. <laughs> and I really don't think I've let anybody down yet. I, I think I'm pretty much <laughs> this way in person. Can be a little much. But Ryan, if I ever, if you come out in two weeks and want to meet, uh, send me a message. Uh, and uh, send me a message. And uh, uh, yeah, we'll get together. But anyway, if you get bored during our meeting, <laughs> just do one of these. Whoa, hey, look at the time. I got to go. <laughs> or 
<laughs> if I say that, if all of a sudden I go, whoa, look at the time, Ryan. Hey, <laughs> nice talking to you. Have a good trip back to wherever you're from. <laughs> I work at Target and I know you used to. What role did I have? Uh, hey, I owe buddy sent me something. He sent me a heart me. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Hold on, do I follow you, Ryan? Maybe I should follow Ryan so we can, uh, I'm gonna follow you back, Ryan. Wow, you got a huge number of followers. You're like mega successful. I should pick your brain and say, how do you get so many followers on social media? What do you do? Uh, would I ever get married again and or have more kids? Debating whether I want to myself. Mississippi Mama Bear, I definitely get married again. I don't think I need any more kids. I have four uh, kids that I wish I could spend more time with. Uh, uh, and I'll tell you, it's hard. One's off to college. One's living at uh, a home in a different town with uh, my first ex-wife, and then two were living at a home in another town with my second ex-wife. And uh, I have been blessed with uh, four beautiful little children. Um, and yeah, I don't think I'd, uh, yeah, no. But I mean, I'd get married again, I think. Although I was just talking about how I kind of like being alone and maybe I'm not good at being married. Maybe I'm not good at being married. I've been divorced twice. You know, maybe it's not what it was meant, what I was meant to do. Maybe some people are the kind of people that marry their college sweethearts and have two and a half kids and work at the same job and live their life and have a totally different uh, path than I do. And maybe that's okay. I certainly would like to cuddle and watch a movie with somebody, go to a show, go out to dinner. I don't know if that means I'd get married again. Uh, but I might. Thank you for liking the live, Sandra Lynn. Maybe Sandra Lynn can join Ryan and I out when we meet for coffee. I could kill two birds with one stone. I've yet to meet Sandra Lynn. She's a regular here in Naperville and a longtime watcher. I used to try and create shows around Sandra Lynn's wants and needs. She goes, well, I, draw, I ride. I tried to do an afternoon show for a while because Sandra Lynn would commute home from work in the afternoon and she said she liked to listen to me uh, while she was driving home. The show never took off. I've done various spinoffs, but uh, I don't know. Almost feel if you, uh, I've gotten, I've done a lot of valuable shows and my thoughts from the gym. I work out two or three times a week and that feels good. Um, and I think a lot of times I have a lot to say. I'll be feeling great. I'll have come into the gym and it'll have been a struggle to get there and I'll have worked out and in 45 minutes, my mood and my spirit and my, I had a pep in my step that I didn't and I'll be so excited to talk about it and I'll, it'll be really inspirational and I'll tell you how great it is to, feels to work out and how you don't have to be there long. My point is, uh, I think there was a lot of good content in there, but, and maybe I'll do it again. But I think having an anchor of a show that is uh, uh, my morning coffee with Ken is important for me, part of my routine, part of my habits. I had a record two days on TikTok, by the way. I had a record two days on TikTok. Good morning, travel buddies. Not like a huge record. <laughs> and again, as I talked about with a different buddy, I won't be able to quit my day job. But uh, when you hit 10,000 followers on TikTok, you become part of, you can become part of their creator rewards program. And they pay you when you get qualified views. 
And there's a bunch of criteria they use for qualified views. The video's got to be more than a minute. It's got to be seen more than a thousand times. It's got to get a certain number of likes, a certain number of time watched. And <laughs> evidently, uh, I've got a few videos that qualified for qualified views yesterday and, and the day before and uh, made $17 two days ago and $18, or three days ago and $18 two days ago uh, from those videos. And I go, wow, that's kind of nice. That kind of feels good. But that, <laughs> that led to my conversation about not being able to quit my day job. It is cool, Chip. It is cool. Again, you get revenue from various social media platforms. YouTube pays a little. Facebook pays a little. TikTok pays a little. None enough to supplant uh, the income required in a, uh, you know, forty-hour-a-week job. And uh, uh, what have you? Do they take taxes out? Yes, I believe they do, because uh, I know I see estimated return before taxes. Yeah, I don't know. It's not been significant enough for me to over-concern myself, but I think they do take taxes out somehow, some way. People really like the bear. I've never seen the bear, but I saw something about it on TV at work yesterday. I don't know what it is. What about live videos and interviews? Everybody wants me to interview other people. I just don't think that's what I want to do. Maybe when Ryan comes out in two weeks, Ryan and I will, uh, uh, I'll go, hello, Ryan. My name's Ken. It's nice to meet you. Would you mind if I interview you just to see how it goes? I'm going to turn our camera around and I'm going to ask you a series of questions. So, Ryan, what brought you out to Naperville today? Oh, you're looking for real estate space. Are you looking commercial or residential? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that you guys want me to interview Ryan. It might be funny. Ryan might think it's funny. I'd have to get approval. I'd have to set up appointments. I'd have to people have people come over to my extended stay in their pajamas. Do I work night shifts? Adrian, I uh, am currently working as a waiter and uh, currently working as a waiter. Uh, so yeah, I work at night. Today I'm going in at five o'clock. I'll be there till like 11 or so. And uh, it's kind of fun. I, you know, it's kind of fun. I, a year ago, a year ago today, I left Target, my job at Target. Oh, somebody asked what my job at Target was. I uh, stocked shelves in the cereal aisle. I made the cereal aisle as awesome as a cereal aisle can be. I dreamed of bigger things. I'm very social. I might be social to a fault. Most people really like it. Some people don't. Some people <laughs> would want to come in the cereal aisle and I'd want to talk to them about what Cheerios they're going to be picking out and they just want to grab their cereal and go. And I go, okay, <laughs> bye bye. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. Uh, I once said my wife and I did videos for my real estate business. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Uh, we used to do a lot of real estate videos. We would uh, call up for sale by owners and say, hey, we're realtors. Can we come out to your house and uh, do a video of your house uh, touring it? Uh, and they'd get watched a fair amount and they did something. They did everything I did in real estate did a little something. You know, worked a little bit. But I, I think I was a realtor from 2005 to 2020, end of 21 or early 22. And I think from the dot-com boom in 99 to 2020, real estate became a sport for many of us. And we thought we should move every two or three years and buy a bigger, better house or, a, you know, because we'd buy a house 
for 200 grand, it'd be worth 300 grand. We'd say, hey, now we can afford a bigger house. Let's go buy a bigger house. And it became a sport. And HGTV became a thing during that time. And we all watched shows about fixing up houses and increasing their value. And uh, probably all wanted to keep up with the Joneses. And the best way to do that was get a house just like the Joneses. <laughs> but I think over the last two or three years, people have become a little more okay with where they're living and less likely to move as often. And again, the pendulum always swings both ways. It'll probably swing back at a certain point and uh, people will start moving in mass again, but maybe not to the point we saw over the last 20 some odd years. And uh, I mean, there's always a need to move, you know, divorce or loss or move into Arizona. But yeah, Lisa, we used to do a lot of videos uh, touring houses together. At Trader Joe's, they encourage the stockers to be social. Yes, they do. I interviewed at Trader Joe's once near the end of my real estate career. I was at a slow patch. It was fall. And I told them I couldn't work on Sundays. And I don't think they liked that and I don't think I was offered a job. They encouraged them to be very social and it would be a fun place to work, kinda. But Target was kind of a fun place to work. Either way, the money, <laughs> a lot of people go, Costco's a great place to work. I'm sure Costco is. I'm sure Trader Joe's and Target, they're all great. But uh, I think, especially as a twice divorced person, you need a certain amount of revenue to uh, cover your financial responsibilities and put a roof over your head. And for me, the easiest way to do that when I haven't decided what I want to do when I grow up is was become a waiter. Because waiting tables, you can make fairly what I'll call real money. Uh, yeah. And uh, working at a Target or a Trader Joe's or a Costco would not provide me the real money uh, that I need. Lisa Smith wants to know, did I get an employee discount at Target? I sure did. And let me tell you, we'd have a lot of people coming through and saying, hey, I'd work here just for the employee discount. And I get that because uh, a lot of people shop at Target. You can buy everything at Target. It's a good store. Um, but the employee discount, I think, was like 20% off on food and 10% off on everything else. And, but you had to either use like cash or a Target card to get that discount. They had something that made it, you couldn't use your bank debit card like you probably use for most of your transactions. And uh, uh, because of that, unless you had cash or a Target card, which I didn't have either, uh, you didn't get the discount. And it really, and let me tell you, let me tell you, during my time at Target, I wasn't flush with money. <laughs> so shopping and buying new pillows and new house stuff, I did not do a lot of shopping outside the necessities. Uh, so I wasn't a huge, I didn't benefit a, to a huge degree from the employee discount. You know, you gotta be able to afford to shop to really get that 10% discount. And let me tell you, for those that are wondering, <laughs> look up my video, Dark Times. It was done two days ago. It's a big revenue source for me. Uh, it's a big revenue source for me. It's been my number one revenue video. It's made like $30 did a video called Dark Times about the struggles I had working at Target. It's like two minutes long. It's been seen like 40,000 times. Paid me $40. Making more off the video Dark Times than I did at a shift. Almost. Uh, Mississippi Mama Bear says Target can be expensive. She's mostly at secondhand stores. Eh. 
Uh, yeah. Hello, Bean. Hello, Bean. Wow, we got 51 people on today. Isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? And I talked for over an hour. I could, I'm just building up my energy. I could probably keep talking, but I don't think I have that much more to say. And when I do my lives on TikTok, it always takes a long time to process the video and then uh, upload it to various social media platforms. <laughs> not woe is me, because it's not like it's hard work, but it does require patience. It does require patience. Sometimes I don't feel that patient. Sometimes I want my videos spread out on social media platforms like this. Share all this valuable content right away. And uh, uh, not have to wait. Not have to wait. But sometimes in life we have to wait. Hello, Captain Kenny. How are you? You driving a truck today? You probably are. You probably are. Let's have a little more coffee. I can see why people do long, long live videos. Because it, when I first went live, I had 15, 20 people watching. Then next 20 minute block, 25 to 35. And now I'm hanging out at 50. <laughs> if I hung out here all day, Might have 500. Might be making so much money. <laughs> I wouldn't need to go to my day job. Do I still go to Starbucks? Hello, Heather. How are you? Uh, do I still go to Starbucks? I do, but I've been going to Pete's Coffee a lot more. Feels a little cleaner. Feels a little cleaner. And it's kind of got a pleasant enough amount of traffic. And it's similar in so many ways, but just different enough that I'm really enjoying Pete's coffee right now. I'm really enjoying Pete's coffee. I think I kind of had a couple experiences at Starbucks. I don't know. Where it just wasn't as clean as I wanted it to be. And I found myself clearing off too many tables and picking stuff up the floor and putting it in the garbage. And maybe I don't want to do that as a customer. Mississippi Mama Bear said she heard there was a cute barista there. Perhaps. Perhaps. Ike wants to know if it is cheaper. Uh, no, it's actually a little more expensive, Pete's is. Uh, but it's not that much more. You know, you might end up spending a dollar more. And the refills are not necessarily free. But it's okay. It's okay. It's still pretty reasonable. And I don't get any of their fancy stuff anyway. I just kind of get regular coffee. And usually spend a couple hours there. So if I spend four or five bucks on a cup of coffee and get two hours of social fulfillment and hydration and caffeination. It's $5 well spent. So, uh, Hi, Ken. Can you share your sobriety journey, please? I mean, that's such a big one. Are you going to check out Scooter's Coffee Shop in 59 when it opens? I wasn't aware there was going to be a Scooter's Coffee Shop. Is there anything specific you want to know about my sobriety journey? Please. I haven't had a drink in just about three years. I stopped drinking three years ago. I drank most of my life. My first... Uh, Drinks were in high school. I remember the first day I got buzzed. I uh, was hanging out with some people I ran cross country and track with and we were going to a football game and I drank and I go, whoa, this feels great. Probably drank too much because going to the football game, my memories are fuzzy. Uh, and I went to college, lived in a fraternity, drank 
too much like a lot of college kids did, but I think maybe society looks at drinking in a different manner than they did uh, in the 80s, uh, probably. But either way, college was certainly time of great excess. Again, I was living in a fraternity. We always had a keg of beer on tap <laughs> 24 hours a day. And there was always somebody you could find to go uh, to the bar with or go down and grab a beer or what have you. Somebody out there uh, was looking to let loose. And if you were one that always wanted to let loose, you always had an opportunity. Uh, <clears throat> had periods in college where I uh, uh, didn't remember getting home from the bars for more often than I did remember getting home from the bars. Uh, yeah, it was weird. I, I don't know, black out a lot. I mean, a lot. My friends would make fun of me because I'd come to a point where I was, uh, again, I think I was covering up stuff that it was unpleasant in my life and how I felt about myself. And for a while you can cover it up with drinking alcohol, but there comes a point where uh, you no longer feel any elation or happiness or goodness from drinking. And at that point I'd be at the bar and I'd have all these negative thoughts and the alcohol wasn't covering them up and I'd <laughs> run home. <laughs> my friends would make fun of me because I'd wake up in the next morning and didn't remember getting a home, and that would happen a lot. After college, I got various jobs, or I didn't get various jobs, I became a stockbroker and uh, came into money for the first time really in my life and had more money than I knew what to do with and was living downtown and was young and single and uh, thinking that alcohol and nice apartments and fancy cars and beautiful women were the uh, key to happiness and indulged in all of them. And uh, was still searching for something and ended up just kind of drowning uh, myself with all those momentary pleasures. And uh, continued drinking till uh, for most of my life. And I kind of looked at myself on the brink of a second divorce just about three years ago today, just separated from uh, my second wife on the way to our my second divorce and was feeling dark thoughts and was staying at a buddy's because I had to leave the house we shared together was staying at a buddy's, feeling really dark thoughts for the umpteenth time in my life. And used to struggle with really dark thoughts uh, most of my life. And I'd realized I didn't drink too much that day, but I still had seven beers. And I said, hey, the one con, I have two constants in my life, really dark thoughts and alcohol. I go, yeah, maybe there's a correlation. Let's try not drinking tomorrow. So, uh, didn't drink the following day. Didn't mean my life's issues were all of a sudden solved because that's not the way it works. Uh, but at least you are forced to address the issues and, uh, the feelings and the anxieties and the worries that uh, you have instead of just kind of covering them up or burying them. Uh, and Coffee with Ken is kind of the show after it uh, where I'm figuring out life after drinking, figuring out what you do with life because I haven't had a drink in three years. I'll tell you what, you, any of you out there that drink too much, and I don't want to describe what too much is, because I'm not saying any of you should quit drinking, but probably wouldn't hurt. But I realized once I stopped how often I, how many hours I spent drinking, and it was amazing. And everything I did was an excuse to drink. 
And Coffee with Ken is the show of a guy's life who's figuring out what to do after he stops drinking. And he works out. He has a job. Yeah, not a glorious job, just waiting tables. Uh, but it's a job and it pays. Uh, uh, you know, fairly good money. He has a roof over his head, not a glorious roof, not a place that he plans to be forever, but it's a place and uh, it's okay. And he smiles a lot and he feels good a lot and he goes to church a lot and he goes to the gym a lot and he uh, thanks God a lot for the blessings in his life. And uh, that brings you to today. Uh, that's what brings you to today. 574, S74 says, I don't know why I still miss it. Sometimes it brings nothing good. Uh, well, you still miss it because it probably occupied 80% of your time. You know, again, I realized just looking back and flipping through pictures that no matter where I was, I had a bottle of Heineken in my hand. And or there'd be several on the table behind me and uh, was kind of getting embarrassed about it. Should have gotten embarrassed 20 years before when I'd <laughs> have my wife's family over. And I don't know, we all would be drinking. We all would be drinking. I was probably drinking faster and more furious than them. And I'd fall asleep on the couch with company over. Or I'd wake up and my uh, my leg was wet because the bottle of beer I had in my hand, I'd fall asleep on it and get on my legs or on the couch. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think it, you have a chance of quitting drinking unless you really want to. You know, there's probably various ways to do it, but... I just decided one day I wanted to. And until you really want to, I think it would be very hard. Do I have any physical symptoms from alcohol? No. I had uh, soreness in my liver gallbladder area uh, for the last 10 years uh, that I think is pretty much gone now. Uh, I think I was probably doing damage to my liver gallbladder or something down there. Uh, from drinking or it was just tired from working so hard and uh, uh, yeah I don't know how much there's you can do uh, uh, except stop drinking the stopping is no problem the staying stopped is harder I mean now you're playing with words. I mean, if you're just stopping, <laughs> are you, you're not really stopping. You're just taking a little break. And that's okay. That's okay. I'm, I don't even know who I'm talking to, if it's a 574 or S74. You know, if you don't really want to stop. I think most people don't. I think most people don't want to stop. I'm a member of various sober pages on various social media just because what have you and i'll have people going popping on going oh, i drank last time i'm such a jerk i eh? so angry at myself i drank again so today's number one of being sober again and i try and be encouraging and i think i am encouraging but i think most of those people just don't want to quit uh just don't want to quit. And if you don't want to quit, don't. You know, I thought about quitting for many years. Yeah, I usually just get another beer and <laughs> drown that thought. Uh, I don't know. But three years ago, I decided, hey, I could probably do a little more with my life. So... Have a little more coffee. Oh, this would be an easy topic to talk about. 
should be an easy topic to talk about. I've talked about it a fair amount. Uh, but yeah, no, I think it's one of the reasons uh, I'm meant to do this show. And I think one of the reasons life's been hard for me is because I'm good at telling a story that's relatable to an audience. And I think God wants me to do this and help people through their own drinking issues or mental health issues or financial issues or relationship issues. Because I'm just a regular guy. Uh, yeah. And uh, I talk about working out, but I don't look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. So people go, hey, if this guy can work out, two or three times a week and get pretty good in pretty good shape at 56. Maybe I can too. Or if this guy can stop drinking at 53, maybe I can too. Or uh, what have you. What gives me the most anxiety on a daily basis? I'm far less anxious than I used to be. Uh, because I can temper the anxiety a lot easier than I used to be. When I get too worried, I catch myself and I realize, hey, you're getting all worried. You're getting bent out of shape. You're thinking about something that may or may not happen later today, later this week, later this month, later this year. Uh, think about a few things you're grateful for, Ken. <laughs> I talk to myself. So I go, I'm grateful for this coffee. I'm grateful for my boss's wife who gave me this chocolate. I'm grateful for Will Bill Chill who gave me this uh, uh, cup that I have water in right now. And I am telling you, it works. And I am telling you, it works. Highland 517 is talking about... Uh, her brother who's divorced twice and has some serious, serious health issues. Well, he still probably should find things he's grateful for. I know it'd be easy to woe is me and he sounds like he's got some serious health issues and he's divorced twice and his health is deteriorating. And he may only, we all, we all only have a limited time on this planet. Whether you have a serious health issue or not, you know, the clock's ticking on all of us. And I think if we realize that, and not in a bad way, but go, okay, I'm 56. I might live till my mid-80s. So I got 30 years. That's going to go real quickly. Uh, would I rather spend those 30 years kicking butt? Uh, loving on my kids, improving my financial situation, getting in good shape, working hard, doing a talk show that matters, or would I rather spend it sitting on a couch, drinking a beer, watching a football game? And for me, I'd rather uh, kick, kick ass and see what I can do and roll the dice, if you will, and go for something. The easy route would be kind of sit on the couch and watch the game. And even if you have a job you in a relationship you aren't that excited about, you know, at least every weekend you can have a buddy over and you guys can drink your beer on the couch and watch the game. And, you know, for a lot of years that was enough for me. Uh, yeah. But I just wanted to see what I could do. So right now, this is what I can do. But I'll tell you what, a year and change ago, uh, from where I was a year and change ago, this is looking pretty good. I got a regular source of income. I'm covering my financial responsibilities and I have a roof over my head. And uh, it'll be exciting to see where I am a year from now. You know. And again, I know material things don't buy happiness, but it'd be nice. It'd be fun to have a nice car. Maybe a small home with a nice little yard. Yeah. But anyway, I've been talking for quite some time. I have been talking for quite some time. 
probably talking for long enough, so I'm going to have one more sip of coffee. I so appreciate you guys for joining me on this Tuesday morning. I really do. Hope anybody new out there, you subscribe to my page, whatever social media platform you're seeing this on right now. It means a lot to me when you do, and I have a lot of fun doing it, and hopefully I have some lessons that are worth sharing. Um, I appreciate you. I hope you had a wonderful night's sleep. I hope if you're struggling in any way, find a way to be okay with it. Go, okay, well, I'm struggling today, but I've struggled before, and I get through it. And the quickest way to get through it, no matter what your situation is, find a couple things you're grateful for. And I promise you, if you open up your eyes and start looking for things you're grateful for, uh, you'll suddenly be able to find a whole bunch of things you're grateful for. Again, I'm in an extended stay. I, as I'm saying goodbye to you, I'm thinking how grateful I am. I have a bag of apples and a bag of oranges in the fridge that I'm going to eat as soon as uh, I sign off here. It uh, doesn't have to be big. I think if you find a way to be grateful for small things, little blessings in life, uh, uh, suddenly it'll become a habit and you'll be uh, finding things everything, everywhere to be thankful for. And uh, that's a real good feeling. So I'm thankful for you. I uh, want to thank you for joining. Hope your uh, Tuesday is starting off well. Hope you had a great day yesterday. Hope you are feeling good. I hope you are loving yourself. I hope you are forgiving yourself. And as always, I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.